everybody says there is no such thing as a universal solution. And I actually think that's fundamentally wrong. And because we don't conceive of universal solutions, we wander around as if we don't know what to do. But there's all sorts of things that are fundamentally correct, no matter where you are. And I'm going to give you a list. First is you need to understand and preserve natural ecologies, history, and culture. Many places actually, in their rush to development, overlook all of that. The Urban Growth Foundry is the one dimension of this particular principle. that You need to preserve what's most valuable in a place. That's a universal principle. And you can actually assign specific actions to making it real. You can map where all the ecological uh, and endangered species are. Uh, you can isolate buildings and historic places. Second is mixed use. There's no great city that isn't mixed use. This is a universal principle. What does mixed use mean? Uh, it means that instead of zoning by use, here's one kind of housing here, there's a shopping center here, there's an office park here, and they don't overlap, they don't combine, they're isolated and separate. Mixed use literally puts things side by side, say within a city block or even vertically, so housing over shops. But mixed use also has a more profound meaning that you don't build one kind of housing for one income group in one place. You mix different housing opportunities together so that there's a range of people all interacting in their common area. You know, mixed use also means bring nature into the environment rather than putting it in a separate category somewhere else. That's what people desire, that's what people love, and it's actually the most robust socially because it involves the kinds of interaction that makes society civil. Connections, the scale of development, there are absolutes there. The human body describes a human scale, and connections really have to be framed there. That's another universal principle. Public space. Architects focus on buildings, objects. You've got to think about the space between the buildings. That's where life happens. And that's where the life of a culture in a city happen. And you can actually talk about what scale the neighborhood parks are, how frequent they should be, and what kind of regional and cultural facilities need to happen at what scale. These are all knowable principles. No great place is without walking and biking. And there are some very simple rules about that. You know, how wide should a bike lane be? We know. It's the same here as it is anywhere else in the world. We can actually put it down and say this is a universal best practice. We need to enhance transit. Certainly, we've had an explosion of all sorts of local mobility forms, and that's all very exciting. We need to make space in our right-of-ways for all of that. And we need to focus. We need to use those modes as the armature of growth. We need to stop using freeways as the framework of our city. And we have to start making walkable streets and transit networks the, the armature around which we grow the city. So these are all things we know and we can actually quantify and we can quantify the benefits. And it doesn't hurt to have a checklist.